Well, hello and welcome back to It's a Good Life. Over the course of the last month, I've had several existential crises as I've transformed this garage into this. So the very first step in this project was tacking up some drywall and I lost all the footage of this, but you get the idea. We got it on the wall and that was good enough. Then it was time to really dig into this drywall project and feel like this is good a time as any to tell you that I'm not an expert. I just couldn't stand looking at this one second longer and we've got some really big plans for the year. So I needed a space to make room for abundance. At this point, I realized that I had this really awkward three inch lip throughout the entire ceiling part beam thing so I had to cut some more drywall to add to the top which actually wasn't as hard as I thought I just have a little bit of PTSD from drywalling and on that note a word from our sponsors you always want to wear eye protection especially when you're working with drywall and ideally I don't know where ours are but ideally these would be like completely enclosed like science class goggles and let me tell you why because in Mexico I was feeling kind of full of myself, I guess. I wasn't wearing my glasses. I was working, finishing the attic and a bunch of drywall dust debris got in my eye and it got underneath my contact. This didn't turn into an emergency until right after we crossed the border. It was really bad. I actually still have an astigmatism in my eye because of that incident. Ironically though, I had an astigmatism with no incident in this eye and I scratched it and I corrected my astigmatism. So all that to say, you wanna be really careful when you're working with drywall or dust or anything like that. And please always make sure you wear eye protection. After using a bunch of the wrong stuff, I realized that this was the right stuff. Things quite literally went a lot smoother after this realization. Now this is where things get really exciting because I knew this was one thing I could not mess up. <laughs> and I was really excited to be one step closer to the goal. Now of course, all work no play makes DIY projects really unenjoyable. So here we're taking a minute to do our favorite dance known as the Tommy. Many of you mentioned the true star of the show is Tommy's mustache, and you are correct, my friends. No show here is complete without a little mustache twirl. Butt crack on film? No, I've not gotten your butt crack on film. Now this was a moment for me, you guys. It really felt like we were getting somewhere at this point and I was very excited about it. Until this. This is where everything went wrong. So I've just spent the entire morning hanging these lights and they don't work. So there's that. And I've told everybody that I'm posting this video on Friday. So there's also that. I guess this is a lesson in uh, check your lights first and roll with the punches.
I do eventually get new lights, which you'll see in just a little bit. I recommend buying your lights in person so that you don't get anything faulty or broken in the mail. At least that's a lesson that I learned this building project. Organizing and decorating by far have to be some of my favorite parts of projects. And it's because I've learned something very important on this homesteading journey, and that is the value of systems. Having a place to keep all of my tools and having a place where certain activities happen, like starting seeds or having a composting center is a very important. And I've also learned that aesthetics do matter to me and that a space that feels good is a space that I'll use. And that's why I worked really hard on this project to make the space inviting. Like even having a little place to hang my hat. I thought these little details were important, so I included them. Now, something you may not know about me is that I'm an artist. And you probably don't know that about me because I haven't shared a whole lot of my art with you. But I hope that this year that changes, starting with this little project and creating a space to hold my art supplies. And with this, my friends, I can officially say welcome to our suburban farm and the engine of our homestead. We finally have a place for all of our amendments and shade cloths, a place to store seeds for now, so long as it doesn't get too humid, a place to start seeds. And if we like those lights, we'll get more of them to go right here and a place to hold all of our pots. I officially know where everything is and it feels so good. From these decorative little dollar store planters to this tiny little planter we got at a wedding. This is the start of something wonderful and I am so excited. Here is where I'll start so many seeds. And over here, I'll use a seed blocking approach. I've even got a place, please excuse the dirtiness, to start my own seed starting mix. And of course, a place for seeds, but something you might not know is this contraption that I'm really excited about. This is gonna help me brew worm tea because the biggest addition to our farm, our urban farm, our homestead this year is the expansion of our worm farm. This is a system I bought off my friend Stephen Cornett of Nature's Always Right and it's a six tote system full of worms and worm castings. Now I've already been doing worms in the kitchen but this is a totally next level system which allows me to catch all of the leachate right here through this little nozzle. It's going to let out all of the wonderful worm product that we can use in our garden, which is going to be huge to self-sufficiency and creating all of our own nutrients here on the homestead. Oh, and in case you're wondering, here's my art. No real rhyme or reason to this. It just makes me happy. With a little elbow grease, okay, a lot of elbow grease, we are officially ready for an amazing, abundant 2020. If anyone else is starting seeds out there this weekend, I wish you a very happy seed starting weekend, and I will catch you guys in the next video.